Iran can make more electricity than um, than you can imagine with this new plasma physics technology. They, they're, this, you're it. talking about the UFO that they built. They said they snared the uh, one of our drones with. Yeah, well, um, that, that's part of it. And look at Gordon Duff's other article about uh, how uh, remember a couple weeks ago when the North Korean missile blew up on the uh, on the launch pad. Yeah. Well, that was a. Uh, there was a UFO spotted there too, but that was one of ours. It was a uh, device that was seen uh, going to the scene. Uh, the device went from zero to sixteen thousand eight hundred miles an hour in a in a hundred milliseconds. Extreme rapid acceleration. Our government is sitting on suppressed technologies that will blow you away. <laughs> I, I want to. Um, I want to. I, I, sure. I want to recommend to all your listeners go onto YouTube. And pull up a uh, pull up some videos on a guy named Richard Dolan, and Richard Dolan um, has documented through public available documents the fact that we have a suppressed technology in this country that is beyond your imagination, and that um, that there is a second civilization. There is what he calls a breakaway civilization that is hidden from our our sight, that is already out exploring the stars using these technologies that I'm referencing. Well, my he's, uh, he's on YouTube. His name is Richard Dolan. Go on YouTube and look up Richard Dolan and, and listen to his lectures. Uh, they're an hour and a half, two hours long, but you will come away from this very well informed and you will, you will be able to see behind the curtain and get an idea of what's really going on in these black programs and all this, this R&D world that's out there. I have to dis disagree with you on one point. Because I wrote about these ships, I wrote about the civilization about 50 years ago. I had to spend a lot of time, last 40 years, studying what I wrote about then. But uh, it's uh, it's amazing how accurate I was. And I, I've, I've been making the comment, the reason the UFOs are so top secret, and my friend Bill Cooper saw it, you know, and other people, ha I've, matter of fact, I've, um, you know, other people have confirmed this, but the... Uh, if if the reason the UFOs are so top secret is because if the people in this planet knew we could we could zip to the moon, have lunch on the moon, and be back skiing in Switzerland in a in a heartbeat in a day on these craft that you're talking about without using any gasoline, no fuel. Well, well, that, 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 that's the point there, Clay, and, and that's the point I was going to make, is, is if UFOs are real, and they are, and we, we can document them, you know, Gordon did a good job on that on Veterans Today, people understand they don't work on petroleum products. There's other energy technology that these things use, and that's part of the suppression. That's part of keeping us enslaved to the uh, the oil cartels around the world. Okay, now, now, now uh, let, let me hold it right there, because what I've said, that Obama's idea of uh, greening America is to sell the top of that mountain to a foreign company, probably China. China builds the wind generators, brings it over, puts it on top of that mountain, pipes it down to the power company, and sells it to you. What if we put a, a generator, uh, or wind generator, and a solar unit on the roof of everybody's home? I, I'm, I'm going to tell you not to waste your time on wind or solar, because we've got uh, better technologies than that that are, that are much more cost effective. Okay. Wind and solar are passe. It, it, it'd be like investing uh, in a buggy whip today. <laughs> okay. All right. My, my, uh, my other theory, Mike, is that God's alive and well today on the Internet. Burning bushes are kind of passe, so I think he uses the Internet now <laughs> to get information like this out. These new technologies, there's a company called TED that's been doing a tremendous research, and, and they say there, there's like a film you can put on your window that turns that window into a, a generator for your home. Yep, sure does. It's, uh, the technology is called thin film on glass. It was developed by a company called Jusung out of Korea. Now, the goal, the goal for all of this, I mean, I've been trying to define this for years. They've been pretty upfront about it. 
They want a one world government of the bankers, by the bankers, and for the bankers. Yep. And That's and they want. How do we find that? Except except by becoming more self sufficient with the with this energy technology. Of course, they're trying to keep us from that. I mean, I had people that built uh, solar uh, or, or magnetic generators and put so much electricity out into the uh, back into the system that they got scared and tore it apart. Mm -hmm. They thought they'd be no, killed. My, my friend Paul Pantone, I'm all 20 years ago, drove him around and we, we kept running his little uh, Briggs and Stratton motor off of waste oil with his carburetor called a geek system. They put him in insane asylum. I'm sorry, Clay, you broke up a little bit there, didn't I you? Said, I said, my friend Paul Pantone, he started the Geek system, the Geek carburetor. I helped. I, I was with him when he started it. And uh, they put him in an insane asylum. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're, they're going to protect their monopoly because they've got too much invested. And, uh, you know, it's all about uh, securing your wealth. They're not going to let... They're, not, they're really afraid of these disruptive technologies, let's just say that, because... We can put the oil business out of business overnight once people really understand and it isn't commercially available. And that's what they're, they're fighting against is keeping this off the market. But I'm, af I'm afraid for them that uh, the, 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 the critical mass, the point of critical mass is, is here and that these technologies are going to break out and they'll no longer be able to put that genie back in the bottle. Well, you know, everybody predicts the... Uh <laughs> yeah, 2012, man, the end of the world. Mayan said it's the end of the world. I, I, I think it might be the end of the banker's world. World. Well, you know, let, let's just talk about that for a minute because you look at the business model, the banking model that is set up. That's a 500-year-old model, and it's based on um, usury. And usury is like a paper because uh, it doesn't create anything, it takes. And the way the system is set up is that uh, each, each per um, generation, wealth is concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. It's kind of like the game of Monopoly. Well, it looks like old Mr. Rothschild has won the game. Okay, he's got all the money. He has it all. He's got all the money. Nobody has anything else. I don't know anybody who's got you know, two nickels to rub together right now. So Rothschild, you won't. Do you want to play again? I mean, wh wh what's the point? Wh wh what's the point? Global control. Okay. Now what? What, what are you going to do from here? Let, let's, have, let's play a new game of Monopoly. You already own Park Place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, 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 do you, what do you want us to do? You just want to sit there and be bored? What? Well, let, 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 let's, let's redo the global. It's time to reinvent the global economy. Um, you know, this, this one has, uh, they, they've concentrated the wealth in so few hands that billions have nothing while a few have 90% of the wealth of the planet. Um, you know, it's a monopoly. You won. I, I don't know what else to say. How do we fight against this? Now, one of the problems is every every time, everyone I've met here that's tried to get something organized, tried to pull people together, whether it was a militia or political parties or, or anything, they've all been demonized. Even Ron Paul, you got the Tea Parties putting Ron Paul down. You know, it's I'm, I'm almost to the point, Mike, that I think uh, maybe the elite are right. We're not smart enough to govern ourselves. Well, let, let's, let's take a little different viewpoint than that, because I, I don't think that's this. You know, this, I didn't create this system. You didn't create this system. No. Nope. I wasn't consulted on how it was. I was born, and this system already existed, okay? And so we were born, um, you know, where we were, how we were, and uh, we haven't had a chance since day one because the deck was already stacked. Uh, you know, the, the, cards, the deck was stacked, the cards were dealt before you and I were, were even born. And so how are we supposed to overcome this when this thing has been in planning and uh, uh, it's, already, it's already predestined before we were born? So how, how, how do you do that? How do you deal with this? I don't know. I, uh, they, they keep telling me the economy is going to collapse. I hope it does. But we can start from scratch and build over again. 
build something that, that really works and that really benefits the people of this planet. You know, I mean, I, I, I've got a kid. I want to leave this world a better place for him, for, for, for his family. You know, it, it, it's time that we, uh, we started looking forward. Every decision we make, we should carry uh, the responsibility of how this is going to affect our posterity uh, seven generations in the future. And if we think we start living that way, we can, we can live in a more responsible way. I think a lot of it is, is what we've been sold. You, know, you, you watch TV, and you know, you've got to have a faster car, you've got to have a prettier girlfriend, you've got to live in a bigger house. And um, you know, maybe those aren't the right things to be chasing. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe, uh, maybe that should. Uh, but you know, they're pretty. Again, they're pretty upfront about it, Mike. They they don't call it programming for nothing, do they? No, they don't. And, and, and one of the things all, all now, I've talked to farmers and ranchers down here on the border. They they've told me one thing. Uh, well, it's it's really hard for us, besides the economic conditions uh, that they put on the farmers. It's hard for us to get help. The, the teenagers, the young people, they don't want to do this. They don't want to. They don't want to come on the farm anymore. It's kind of like the how are you gonna how are you gonna get them back on the farm after they've seen L.A. after they've seen Hollywood. And, and again, isn't this a programming? I mean, if we got back to uh, the smaller towns, the 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 uh, counties being self-sufficient. And, and and helping helping people put solar put whatever whatever technology we've got the latest technology we've got to produce our own power be a little bit more self sufficient wouldn't we be uh, just a, a heck of a lot better off? Well, we've got some fundamental problems here. Why should any kid want to work when there's a welfare system out there that'll take care of them good enough that they could survive? Take away the social safety net. And uh, people's uh, motives will, will will change. It'll it'll be ugly. It'll be hard. But you know what? Uh, you'll you'll have people who are willing to work again. Well, hopefully that will work, and we will have that done here. Let me uh, stay with me. I I, I want to keep you for a little bit more. If you if if you don't have to go. Okay, I'll give you another know, five ten minutes or so. Whatever whatever works for you. Whatever helps. All right, let me uh, let me shut some of this down here because we're just about out of time. Tell people how they can hear your show and uh well, you can hear my show. I'm on at six a.m. at uh, Pacific time or nine a.m. Uh, Eastern time at www.republicbroadcasting.org. And once again, that's uh, www.republicbroadcasting.org. You can hear me there at uh, six a.m. Uh, Pacific or nine a.m. Central. And you know what time zone you're in, you'll figure it out. The other thing is you can uh, read my uh, my articles at www.veteranstoday.com. And uh, the search bar, just type in Mike Harris. It'll bring up uh, what's really going on in the All world. Right. That may All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Truth Radio, you can listen live or listen to a large selection of archive programs. Truthradio.com. The truth. All right. And uh, Mike, thank you. Okay, you're you're welcome. Play we off the air? Uh, not quite. I'm still I'm still uh, we we got a couple more minutes. If you if you want to give us any any last suggestions, uh, what can we what can the people out there do? I mean, why should anybody be supporting this show? Why should anybody uh, Why should anybody care? Can you? Uh, well, you know, what kind of life you want to live? Is my advice to everybody: become as self sufficient as you can. You know, if you're going to bank, take it to a small credit union. Don't give your money to a bank that goes back to New York. Plant a garden. Grow some of some of your own vegetables. Keep a few chickens. Become as self-sufficient as, you, as possible, and uh, you know, brace yourself because you've got some hard times ahead. All right, I think that's good advice, and we're out of here. Thank you. All right, Clay. Hey, thanks again. Thanks for having me. Everybody have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay.
with chocolate milk, he has ice cream bars. <laughs> We've got some real problems that I know we must get solved And I want to be part of the team, I want to get involved The federal officials say they want to chip my herd But that won't solve the problem, and I think that it's absurd they want to chip my chickens, goats, and chip my horses too. They say they want to stop disease, and that's what they must do. The price for all this chipping done my state will have to pay. And that means they'll raise my taxes, and I don't get to have a say. What about my privacy? My right to life and liberty If I decide to ride my horse and leave my property Well, I'll face a thousand dollar fine And they'll come after me They say it's voluntary But in just a few years' time It will be mandatory And non-compliance will be We are living in America today In such a fool's paradise as the people of China lived in 20 years ago, as the people of Czechoslovakia lived in a dozen years ago, as the people of North Vietnam lived in six years ago, as the people of Iraq lived in only two years ago, and as the people of Cuba lived in only yesterday. So she started talking about him. She made the reference that he was already born. Senator Obama is, by their own words, the one we have been waiting for. And then she said, what if I told you that you're going to have a black president very, very soon, and he's going to be a communist? Uh, what does he mean by a national security force? A national security force? He means a, a, a community level uh, a security cell, pretty much like the uh, Committees for the Defense of the Revolution in Cuba and the uh, Boliv Bolivarian Circles in, in, in Venezuela. These are networks of, they are already in place. Unless we can reverse forces, which now seem inexorable in their movement, you have only a few more years before the country in which you live will become four separate provinces in a worldwide communist dominion ruled by police state methods from the Kremlin. One of us asked, uh, okay, then, then what's his name or something, and then she said, Barack. So that at one point, when the time is right, all you have to do is introduce the leader that you are going to, through the democratic process, eliminate the democratic process. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. Check up. All right. That was uh, from Robert Welch from the... Uh, and information that about Obama that is surfacing. Now, let me tell you, let me explain to what you. Tom Fife was an American computer networking specialist and international businessman. He reported the alarming facts about the Kremlin's connection to Barack Obama. This boast came from a Communist Party official, occurred uh, to a, uh, during a business trip to Russia. 16 years before Barack Obama was ushered into the presidency of the United States. It was like an elastic band snapping all the way from 1992, Fife shakily admitted. Upon recall of the exact moment, he realized a communist official had been telling the truth. It was a very, very scary feeling. Fife was a physicist and computer engineer who had been traveling to Russia for a joint venture 
with a state-owned company after the shocking revelation was revealed to him after several business meetings. Fife and his partner were invited to the company owner's home at the end of uh, the journey for a farewell dinner. The owner's wife was a Communist Party official, was climbing two ladders, as Fife put it, one ladder being the KGB and the other being the National Russian Society and Business Ladder. As the evening wore on, the female Communist official became increasingly agitated over slight a perceived slight in her emotions spilled over. You Americans like to think you're so perfect, she snarled. What if I told you that very, very soon you're going to have a black president and he's going to be a communist? The KGB operative was not yet finished. She had now dropped this bandship bombshell on the entire gathering. She felt compelled to continue. His name is Barack. She sneered. His mother is white. His father is an African black. He's gone to the best schools. He's what you would call Ivy League. Fife recalls being stunned and shocked at the words flowing from the communist mouth as she continued to rattle off an incredibly precise set of details about this communist, uh, communist operative who has supposedly become president of the United States. The communist official then stated that he was born from Hawaii, but he would very soon be elected to the Chicago State Legislature. This turned out to be an early pre prediction as uh, Barack Obama was not elected uh, state senator in 1996, a full four years afterwards as uh, he took Alice Palmer's seat. In 1992, Obama had graduated from Harvard Law School, accepted a position as a fellow of the University of Chicago Law School. Perhaps the most shocking revelation is how deep the communist Soviet, the Soviet communist attack has embedded itself into the American political and educational culture. A quick view of Obama's political career shows a tract unexplicably greased from his tuition payments at Harvard, Columbia, uh, to a position at the UOC Law School, to his eventual electoral victories in the Illinois State Senate, United States Senate, and U.S. Presidency. Barack Obama's parents ostensibly met in a Russian language class. This could have been where his mother was recruited by Barack Obama Sr., who could have already been working undercover for the KGB. In order to brainwash the child from an early age, they surrounded him with die-hard communists and fellow KGB, KB agents, KGB agents, such as Frank Marshall Davis, a known Communist Party. USA official who looks more like Obama's father than his supposed father. The Soviet KGB directly funded the CPUS Communist Party USA. This would fit directly into what the Russian Communists said about Barak boasting he'd been raised to be an atheist and a communist. He would be a blessing for world communism, Fife recalled her saying. After getting over the initial shock of hearing the, you know, the current president was a KGB agent. Creepy prediction stayed with the physicist, physicist upon his return to the United States, though he paid it no mind until he began to hear of the swiftly rising political star named Barack Obama. When Five learned that the same Barack was running in the 2008 presidential election, everything snapped into place and he had to tell somebody. Today, Fife admits he deeply disturbs him. He's never been able to shake the ominous feeling of foreboding about what comes next. Now that the uh, KGB official's prediction has come true, it never leaves you having someone tell you they've engineered the takeover of your country. It's really quite scary. All right. I'm not even sure Obama's wife is a female. I don't know. There was one photo of her with a uh, with a skirt on, and sure looked like there was a bulge under that skirt. And of course, uh, they did publish a picture of one of Obama's uh, college romances, and that was a guy too. How are we doing over here? All right, I'm cutting this one short today. And I certainly appreciate you listening. Now, folks, we've got a couple of things. I have some fake books. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
uh, 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 that's fiction books for the idiots out there. They're fake books. The fiction books tell you what uh, what have we got going here. Let's see here. What'd you uh, what'd you do, Sonny? Come in under, under as a uh, guest or what? Yeah, come back anytime. Bada bing's okay. If you come in on that. See ya. And, uh, how uh, about Yeah, I don't care what you're talking about. Alright, what else we got? That's it. I'm 